Hello everyone. I am currently hard at work on things my mother wouldn't let me watch volume 2. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to get that video out before the end of the month, but as it happens, I, I went out of town to Anime Milwaukee for a few days, so I wasn't able to get anything done while I was gone, and now I'm kind of looking for some content I can make a little quicker. Just to get it out there. And luckily, I have just the thing. So, towards the end of last year, I opened up a P.O. box uh, and asked people to send in weird sodas as well as any movies they wanted me to take a look at. Um, no one sent me any weird sodas, even though I specifically asked for it. But I did get... A few DVDs. So I, I took the time late last month to watch everything that was sent to me, and I thought today we could talk about all of these things. Uh, so the first movie I'm going to talk about is a film called Dark Water. It's a Russian horror movie, and there's about like a dozen other movies that are cl called Dark Water or Dark Waters, plural. And in fact, I have another movie called Dark Waters. Um, so I, I really hope this was the movie that was intended to be sent to me, and not some other movie. <laughs> I mean, it, it was bad. I'll give it that much. It was pretty bad. Uh, this was sent in to me by YouTube user Hair Tweet Cat. So thank you very much, Hair Tweet Cat, for Dark Waters. It's a, like I said, it's a Russian film, and... The movie itself is honestly really boring. I, I didn't really get much out of, like, the the movie as it exists. The funniest thing about this movie is how bad the dub is. Like, everyone on it seems to be familiar with English. They all have pretty clear, like, American accents. And when I say American, I mean, like, North American accents. Some of these people could be Canadian, I don't know. It, it, it's clearly American accents, it's not people who are struggling to say the words. But the dialogue is just pure nonsense. Like, n none of these sentences have been translated in a comprehensible way. Like, it borders on dingo pictures, honestly. This borders on dingo dubbing. Just like, with better acting. Like, imagine a better actor reading the lines dingo writes. Like, there's a point at the film where they, they find this girl who's kind of been lost for a while, and one of the guys is just like, oh, where have you been? She's like, oh, I was in the other world. And it's like, what do you mean you were in the other world? That's not a normal thing to say, and no one reacts to it. No one is like, the other world? What do you mean the other world? Is this some crazy horror? No, I, I think it was just a mistranslation. I'm pretty sure that line was supposed to be, they found me like on the other side of the river or something. I, I don't know what they mean. They I was in the other world. And then just no one, no one finds that weird at all. Yeah, horribly, horribly mistranslated. This is just like, like you stuck the dialogue into Google Translate and then just had actors read it. And God bless those poor actors, because, like, it, it, they never let on that these lines make no sense. I, I wonder if they were given the full script or just the lines they were supposed to read. Because, like, I could imagine someone coming into a booth and just having, like, random sentences, and you're just like, I don't know how these sentences are gonna string together into a coherent story, but sure, here we are. I really wouldn't recommend Dark Waters. Uh, the, the, there are some laughable lines. Some of the lines are really, really funny, but otherwise the movie is just dull. There's not that much going on. Um, I haven't seen any of the other Dark Water or Dark Waters movies, so I don't know how this one ranks up. This might be the best of all of them. I doubt it, though. I bet there's better ones than this. Uh, Hair Tweet Cat also offered to send me a digital copy of The Last Dinosaur from 1977. Um, and, I, and I tried emailing him and said, like, hey, yeah, s send that on to me, and I never heard back. So, Hair Tweet Cat, if you're watching, I would love a copy of Last Dinosaur. 
please uh, let me know. That was the only movie that wasn't sent in by John Cleveland. All the rest of these were sent in by John Cleveland. So uh, thank you, Hair Tweet Cat, for that. And thank you, John Cleveland, for th the rest of this stack. I, thi I think that's true. Hold on. I'm... I might need to double check my letterbox because I did write down on Letterboxd who sent me all these. This one might have been sent to me by not John Cleveland, but I'm pretty sure everything else was sent in by John Cleveland. So I guess the first two I'm going to talk about are the two that were sent to me that I had already seen. Uh, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter and Pocket Ninjas. Now, Pocket Ninjas is kind of funny because... I already had a copy of Pocket Ninjas, and I sold it. And that's why it wasn't on my big letterbox list of all the movies I own. And, uh, then I got sent another one, and I'm like, well, okay. I, I will hold on to this one just since it was sent into me. I think I could do a Hollow Victories episode on this. I definitely have a pair up for this, so I will hold on to Pocket Ninjas. There may be Pocket Ninjas related content coming down the line. I think the funniest thing about this movie is that the these kids on the cover are not the Pocket Ninjas. These are not characters from the movie. And I love that the two kids in the background are dressed as Scorpion and Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. Because that is... That has nothing to do with this movie at all. Jesus Christ Vampire, on the other hand, I'm actually pretty happy that I have a copy of this. I, I think that's just a real funny thing to have in your collection. Um, this movie I watched as a potential for the show, because, like, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter is a strong title. That is exactly the type of thing I would talk about on my show. But I watched it, and, like, it's, it's a parody movie. It's a joke. It's a joke movie, and I feel like if I did a review of it, that almost feels like missing the point. Like, like this is something almost in the vein of, like, I don't know, Rocky Horror or or uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, right? Like, this is, this is a joke movie. They're doing, like, a, a silly goof. It's, it's not supposed to be taken seriously. And so, I, I honestly, I think it's kind of funny. Um, I, I think it works better than a lot of other pretending to be bad movies I have seen but yeah I don't I don't know that this has review potential maybe I have changed the name of my show from bad movie show to weird movie show specifically so that I can talk about better movies and I think this is a better movie this would be above the type of stuff I usually watch but, uh, I, I do watch a lot of stuff with silly titles, so maybe there will be a review of this. Maybe. Or maybe I will, you know, do, like, a joke review of it. I've considered that. Anyways, it, it, whether I make a review of this or not, I'm really happy to have a copy of it, so th thanks a lot for that one, John. The rest of these I had not seen. So, I am going to start by talking about Kaibikichi, or Kibikichi. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it. They say it in the movie, and I've, I've forgotten. I think it's Kibikichi. Kibikichi. It's about a werewolf samurai, and it's somehow not quite as interesting as you would want a werewolf samurai movie to be. It's still pretty decent, honestly. The, the problem with this movie is it's about 50% really interesting, really fascinating, really well done, like, I, I don't know, like, like werewolf samurai movie. Like, it is kind of what I want out of a werewolf samurai movie. And then the other 50% is really boring. It's just people talking and talking and talking, and it's like, oh my god, get on with it. And it's not every talking scene that's bad. I don't mind some slow moments. There are slow moments that work in this film, but a lot of it is so boring. So this is like a, a almost perfect split down the middle on like 
Some of these scenes I look at and I'm like, man, I want to recommend this as like some brilliant hidden gem because it is incredibly well made. But then the, there's the other half of the movie and I'm like, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Move on. Move on. Come on. And so I, I would hesitate to call this like some hidden gem or something because there's a lot of... There's a lot about it that doesn't work, but there's also so much about it that does work. I, I really enjoy, like, some of the, the some of the really wild moments in this film. It, it works really well sometimes and doesn't work at all other times. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe you'll like it. There, I'm sure there are people out there who would watch this and be like, yes, this is brilliant, why is no one talking about this? Um, for me, it had its moments, it was fun. It, it, I, I almost wonder if this could also be a review, this could be like a review, and I could talk about, hey, these are the scenes that are really good and really work, and here's all the parts that don't really work, you know, just sort of make a clearer divide there. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it could happen. I could do a review of this. Interesting movie. Definitely an interesting movie. That's the thing. Everything I got sent, there was at least something about it that I was like, okay, that's interesting. So if people at least know know that about me. They know I'm I'm in for something interesting. I also got Die Hard Dracula, which is a movie on the IMDb bottom 100. Uh back in uh, in high school, back in high school, I made an effort to watch like all the movies on the IMDb bottom 100 and at some point I just had to quit cuz I'm like these movies aren't even fun. These aren't fun bad movies. These are just hard to watch. Right? Like, fun bad movies like The Room or Birdemic. You know, sure, people are going to give those low ratings, but there's also going to be a handful of people coming in giving it like an ironic 10 out of 10, and that's going to boost the star rating up. The stuff on the IMDb Bottom 100 is stuff that no one is giving an ironic 10 out of 10. It's always... Like, like, anyone who watches this is gonna be like, no, fucking one star, fuck you. So, yeah, eventually I, I just stopped watching movies from the IMDb Bottom 100, and Die Hard Dracula is one I never really got around to. But, uh, I gotta say, watching this, I, I did get some hints of nostalgia. I was like, ah, this takes me back to high school when I would watch shit like this all the time. This is exactly the type of thing I would watch non-stop in high school. Uh, especially the fucking, like, cheap-ass alpha video DVD. I had a bunch of these when I was younger. Um, I probably don't have most of them anymore, although I think I do have a couple still, like right here on this shelf. This, uh, this was one of the more entertaining movies on the IMDb Bottom 100. It is definitely a slog, and it's also, it, it's like zero production value. This movie was made for zero dollars. Despite, despite having Crispin Glover's father in it. Crispin Glover's father shows up in this movie. It's just like a weird, disorienting movie to watch. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Something I, I didn't figure out while I was watching it, I had to read this afterwards. There's three different guys playing... Dracula. I thought there were just three different vampires in this movie, but no, all three of those vampires are supposed to be Dracula. He's just played by three different dudes who don't look anything alike, because one of them's like way fatter and way older than the other two, and you're like, so so this is the same, the same character then. And it's not even like there's any suggestion of transformation between them. It's not like there's a puff of smoke or like a dissolve between shots, or even just like shot reverse shot. You know, you see the guy, and then you reverse shot to like the the person he's in the room with, and they're like, <gasps> and 
and then you cut back to where they were, and the, it's the a different Dracula this time. Like, no, no, it's just completely random. Whoever they decided to make Dracula in this scene, fuck it, they're Dracula in this scene. I, I mean, I, I guess you could say it's a charming movie. It's certainly a, a movie that was... Someone's vision, this was someone really trying to make a movie. <laughs> Too bad it didn't really work out for them. But I mean, you know, it's on the IMDb bottom 100, so it's at least getting some attention. You know, it's got enough ratings to be on the IMDb bottom 100. That takes like 2,500 ratings, 2,500 people have to rate your movie on IMDb before it's eligible for the bottom 100. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad to have finally watched this. I'm glad I had an opportunity to finally sit down and watch Die Hard Dracula. And it, uh, there's some nostalgia for that, that old high school days. I'm gonna have to go through and see. There's definitely some movies on the IMDb Bottom 100 that are gonna be at least a little more entertaining than others. Um, the problem I got into was a lot of them are just fucking disgusting. Just fucking unwatchable trash. Like, fucking Surf School and Pledge This and Fat Slags. Ugh. Ugh. I watched Fat Slags twice. I watched it once and I'm like, this is disgusting. And then I told my friend about it and he's like, "I we have to watch this movie. So I showed it to my friend. So we we both watched... So, so, I, so I watched Fat Slags twice. Of course, those, that was like the Wild West days of YouTube where like copyrighted movies, like entire copyrighted movies were just up. So a lot of the movies I watched on the IMDb Bottom 100, I just watched for free on YouTube. Fat Slags might still be up. That wouldn't surprise me. That That's not a film I think anyone should want to claim. Uh, I then watched Bad Bin. <laughs> and... Who, buddy? Uh... This could easily become, like, a new bad movie obsession for me, because this is... You'll notice a little number one here. So, this movie came out in 2016, you know, like, five, six years ago. There's already nine of these movies. There are nine Bad Bin movies. So, this is a movie that was written, directed, starring, and edited by all one man. Um... Tom Riley. I forget if Tom Riley is the character's name or the, the actual director's name. Um, I'll look it up. Nigel Bach. Nigel Bach basically made this movie by himself. I think he has like a phone conversation with someone else. And there are a few scenes that he clearly had someone else working on with him. Right, like, there's a shadowy figure that walks behind him, so that had to be someone else. And some of, like, the effects in the movie were just, like, a person off-screen pulling a string. But, for the most part, this is a movie that was made entirely by one person. And so I kind of respect that. I respect that this is, like, a one-man show. And then he went on to make nine more of these fucking things. So this is like paranormal activities, if it was significantly worse, but also significantly more interesting. Like, I, I was far more entertained by this movie than most of the paranormal activities movies. But at the same time, I'm like, no, this is like a bad movie. This was really poorly made. Like, like, on nearly every level. I suppose I can't criticize the technical side too much, uh, because it is supposed to be a found footage movie, but outside of, like, the, the technical angle, the writing doesn't make sense. I suppose the acting is fine, just because it's one dude. Um, the special effects are... Actually charming. The special effects have a charm to them. Most of them are pretty easy to figure out. Most of them you're like, okay, well, that's how he did that. But at the same time, like, none of them look overtly fake, right? They, they don't look fake. They do look realistic enough, just like, 
it's also a really easy effect to pull off, you know? It's like, oh, a chair moved across the room. Okay, you probably tied some fishing line to the to the chair and pulled the chair across the room. That's not hard to do. That's a very easy effect. Like, there's a part of me that just wants to, like, dive in full force to the Bad Bin series. But here's the thing. If, if I reviewed this... It would take me a while even to review all nine movies in the series. Like, we're talking three, four years before I even get to all the Bad Bin movies that have already been released. And at the rate this guy releases movies, he's probably gonna release them faster than I can review them. But, but, I really want to review it. It's, it's really interesting to me that this guy has made this entire franchise just just like on his own uh, uh, later movies include more characters but like this first film he made basically by himself and he spawned a whole nine movie franchise out of it so you know what respect I, I want to know what else this series has going for it. And finally, John Cleveland sent me one of these big uh, Mill Creek 50 movie box sets, which uh, I, I suppose I didn't say don't do that. That's, that's really on me more than anyone else. <laughs> uh, to, to be fair... It is one that seems to have a lot more movies I am interested in than some of the other uh, uh, Mill Creek box sets. Because a lot of these, they, there'll be like two or three interesting movies and then a bunch of filler. This one does have some decent picks on it. Um, it's got... <laughs> It's got Leonard Cohen's It's Alive, which, of course, I, I have a whole box set of, so I, I don't need that. Uh, it's got The Creeping Terror, my favorite bad movie, um, but I, I also already had copies of that. One thing it does have that I did not have prior to this is Rotor, which is a movie I kind of want to review, so now I have a copy of it. There is potential for a Rotor review. There's a couple others in here I'm interested in. Uh, Hundra the Barbarian, Galaxina. There's a, a movie that was billed as Star Crash 2, so that has, like, fake sequel month potential. Uh, and then there's stuff I just kind of want to watch for its own sake. Stuff like uh, Brother from Another Planet or Morons from Outer Space. Um, and in fact, between getting this and doing this video, I did watch one movie in the box that I hadn't seen before. A little movie called Death Machines, which is this positively absurd movie about uh, a man who, like, hires some of the greatest assassins in the world and then, like, puts some sort of brainwashing chip in them so they kill only for him and then like one of them gets the chip loose and is now like opposing the dude it's wild it's fucking wild although <laughs> sci-fi invasion with like the ships on the cover this all says to me like alien invasion and death machines is not an alien movie. Nor is It's Alive. I don't even know that It's Alive is sci-fi. Why is It's Alive on here? Oh well, I'm, I'm not gonna complain about that. It's Alive is a good movie. Like an actually good movie. I don't mean it's like an entertaining bad movie the way I do with Creeping Terror. It's Alive I think is a genuinely good movie. That's why I have it on Blu-ray. Oh shit, Raiders of Atlantis is on here. There, there are there are plenty of movies on here I am interested in seeing, so this is not the worst thing I could have gotten. I'm I'm fine with it. <laughs> Just when I pulled that out of the package, I'm like, ah, fuck me! It's one of these Mill Creek fifty movie box sets, and uh, they don't have the best reputation. I guess I should say 
Although, of all of the ones I have ever come across, this seems to be one of the best ones. I, I would give high marks to Sci-Fi Invasion. So, those are all the DVDs I was sent, but I was sent one other thing. It's a, a letter I got here. Uh, Cambot, put that up on Still Store. This is from Jason G, who says, Hello and good day to you, sir. Hope you are well. My name is Jason G. A very respectful fan of your YouTube channel for the past two to three years. Just want to share some trivia regarding Angel Season 5 and Shark Exorcist. Information related to the television series and 2015 film are not listed on the IMDb and Wikipedia trivia section for Angel and the IMDb trivia section for Shark Exorcist, but are relevant in my opinion. Going to begin with the Buffy the Vampire Slayer spinoff and end with the independent horror comedy. Angel Season 5 trivia. During various interviews conducted between 2003 and 2004, Eliza Dushku? Eliza Dushku expressed interest in reprising her role of Faith Lane, but was unable to do so in contractual obligation for true calling and also potential scheduling conflicts. Shark Exorcist Trivia Actress Gracie Rogers, who portrayed the character Pool Girl, aka Woman with Shark Toys, was also an assistant director on the film. That is all. Thank you. Wishing nothing but continued success for the rest of 2021 and into 2022. Sincerely, Jason G. I don't. I don't understand this letter. I. I've. I've never watched Angel or Shark Exorcist before. I suppose Shark Exorcist does sound slightly relevant to my channel, but Angel. I've never even like talked about Angel on this channel before. I've never even suggested that I might have seen Angel on this channel before. So I, I just have to assume this is some dude, you know, being random, being weird, which, you know, I get that. That does vibe with my channel. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I don't really understand the letter, but at the same time, I feel like maybe that's the point. Maybe it was supposed to be a weird letter, <laughs> but... Okay, thanks for the letter anyway. Thanks for the support, Jason G. Uh, glad you could write in. Now, if anyone else wants to send me a DVD, the P.O. box is closed, but if you'll get on contact with me, uh, at Matt underscore presents on Twitter, uh, I could probably work something out. I, I love getting, like, DVDs and stuff from my fans. Just, like, just because it, it shows me what people are interested in me talking about. Right? Like, I, usually I just pick completely random stuff to talk about. I'm like, yeah, this sounds interesting. Let's talk about that. So I, it, it's always interesting for me to hear from people who, who like the channel, who watch the channel, uh, to see what, what they would want to see on this show. Because some of these, it's like, yeah, no, that is absolutely the type of thing I talk about. You know, Jesus Christ, Vampire Hunter, Bad Ben... Absolutely right up my alley. Love it. So yeah, uh, thanks to Hair Tweet Cat and John Cleveland for the stuff they sent in. Uh, thank you to Jason G for writing in. Uh, I got an alarm going off, so I'm gonna have to hit snooze on that. Uh, yeah, just uh, thank you for your continued support. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Maybe you'll see reviews of some of these movies, maybe you won't.